Welcome to the Know Yourself channel, where making astrology known and understandable is the number one priority. I'm the Scottish astrologer, and in this video I will discuss the sacred secretion, or as it is also known, the Christ within. Now this video will be more about the correct astrological time for the sacred secretion, <clears throat> rather than telling you all about what the sacred secretion is, I will explain it in short so you know what it is etc if you don't already. But if you want a real in-depth explanation then please check out videos by John St. Julian Baba Wanyama or Bill Donahue or Santos Benacci on this subject as they have done a fine job already explaining all about this. The only part that I have partial trouble with is the astrological timing for this. It only makes partial sense and I will explain why and I will explain the astrological timing that does make sense and why later in the video and you can decide if it makes sense and feels right yourself or furthermore try it for yourself and see. But first off let's get into what exactly the sacred secretion or Christ within is. Now the sacred secretion is a secretion or discharge of an oily substance known as the chrism oil or the Christ within. And this substance determines whether or not you have full use of your mind through the activation of your pineal gland, okay? Now this substance is secreted from a part of your brain known as the claustrum. And once it is released from the claustrum, it travels through the central nervous system, down the 33 vertebrae of your spine, down the neurogastric nervous system and then reaches your 5 fused vertebrae, known as the sacred plexus at the bottom of the spine. Sacral plexus. And from here it begins the return journey back up the 33 vertebrae of the spine. And once the 34 vertebrae is reached, it crosses what's known as the vagus nerve. And once it has, it enters the hypothalamus where it sits dormant for 2.5 days. From where it makes its way to the pituitary and the pineal gland, the land of milk and honey, as the pituitary contains a white substance called serotonin representing milk, and the pineal gland contains a yellow substance, DMT, representing honey. But the substance will fail to return here, the oily substance, okay, will fail to return here if you fail to do certain things, such as keeping your body alkaline, opposed to acidic, meditation, fasting, also like drinking alcohol or having sex will stop the oil returning. Basically partaking in anything of your lower base instincts, or shall we say your masculine instincts, will stop the return of this oil. Now, there are many allegorical stories that conceal this sacred secretion within it, one being Santa Claus, who lives at the North Pole, bringing gifts down a chimney, okay? Well, Santa Claus represents the claustrum, okay? Because it's like claus, claustrum, claustrum, okay? Santa Claus. And the claustrum is located at the north pole of your body, okay, in your brain, where the oil is released from. Now, the oil is the gifts and the chimneys, obviously, the spine, okay. We also have the resurrection story of Christ and the story of Jacob's ladder, concealing within them this esoteric secret. Plus, there are many, many more stories. Now, this oil is said to be released 12 times a year once a month when the moon is in your natal sun sign. So if your zodiac sign is Aries, when the moon enters the sign of Aries, the oil will be secreted. Now, I agree this oil is indeed secreted once a month, just as a woman ovulates once a month. Because this sacred secretion is obviously what we can call a spiritual ovulation that happens to men and women. This is how Christ can be born of a virgin, because it conceals the truth of the Christ within, that can be born without physical sex. But there must be alchemical or spiritual sex in order to impregnate the spiritual egg. 
And what is being said regarding the astrological timing for the secretion does not alchemically impregnate the spiritual egg. Because the moon, sitting alone in your zodiac sign at some point in its phase, does nothing but release the egg or the oil. Now in order to alchemically or spiritually impregnate the egg, you must have the sun together with the moon in your zodiac sign on or two days from, okay, the new moon. And you only get one or two, but rarely, new moons in your zodiac sign a year. And this will occur close to, or maybe even on your birthday. Now everyone needs to understand that the moon is the egg, it's magnetic, it's negative, it's the soul, and it's the mother. And the sun is the sperm, it's electric, it's positive, it's the spirit, and it's the father. And all these things are necessary for life together. You separate them and it doesn't work, okay? Now please check out the video titled The Spirit and the Soul, What's the Difference, okay, on this channel. A link will appear at the end of this video. Now this will give you an even clearer picture of the relationship and should make it more obvious the correct astrological timing must be around the new moon that takes place in your zodiac sign that gives you the alchemical conception for the Christ within. <laughs> and all the works I mentioned earlier in this video, meditation, keeping alkaline, etc., are how you ensure the birth of the Christ consciousness as it is known. Now, just as a woman must avoid or do certain things to ensure the birth of a child, Okay, you wouldn't see a woman take part in combat sports, for instance, while pregnant, would you? And just as a woman must avoid or do certain things in order to ensure the birth of a child, so must we in order to ensure the birth of their spiritual child. Now, I would be interested to find out if the people who have done this actually did do it, okay, on or around the new moon in their zodiac sign or not. Because if not, how can they be sure that the change they experience wasn't just through fasting and meditation, etc, etc? As this will obviously have an effect on them. It would be good to know, okay, very interesting. Anyhow, if we look at the allegories, Santa Claus only brings the gifts down the chimney once a year, not once a month. If we look at the destination of the Christ with an oil, we see it ends up in the land of milk, serotonin, and honey, DMT, in the pituitary and the pineal gland. Now, milk is white like the moon, and honey yellow like the sun. And the sun, allegoric, uh, astrologically, sorry, governs honey also. So these are huge clues the sun and moon must be together for the sacred secretion to become the Christ within. Now, the effects of this ancient secret are difficult to explain, but you will begin to see synchronicities. Things will come to you and you will understand things you never dreamed possible. You will end up on a path so far from what you could have ever imagined for yourself to be on. You will look back, okay, at what you used to be and it will be hard to imagine that it was once you as your ways will change so much from what they used to be, okay, what, what they once were. You will basically have a direct line to what some may call God, the universe, or the higher self, whatever you want to call it. It changes your life for the better, and it empowers you and wills you even to help change the lives of others for the better also. <laughs> Plus other things I will leave unsaid. Now, this information is not for everyone, it may sound crazy to most, but for the ones who this information is for, they will understand what I'm saying, unless they can't understand my accent, okay? But look, don't believe what I am telling you, try it for yourself. Has everybody heard of the Da Vinci painting, Salvador Mundi? Because whoever bought the painting, apparently, okay, reported some strange, a strange message on it, which read, a lady who was dressed with the sun and the moon was under her feet might conceive an offspring. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, okay, but the words are relevant. 
Now, some of those words are from a part of the book of Revelation, chapter 12, where it reads, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And you can read more on screen, okay? Now, this great sign that appeared in heaven was what heralded the Immaculate Conception and birth of Christ, okay? Now this sign is astronomical in nature, and the woman is the zodiac sign of Virgo, the only woman in the zodiac. And it's telling us that the sun and moon both inhabit the same zodiac sign of Virgo, okay? So why is it that in this biblical story of the sign that heralded the Immaculate Conception and birth of Christ, why is it that the sun and moon are both together in a zodiac sign? If this wasn't required for the Immaculate Conception of the Christ within or sacred secretion, they obviously must be. And if we believe that the words apparently on the last event, if it even is one, are true, again, I don't know if the story is true, that's not important, okay? What's important is the words on it, they are very interesting. Again, they read a lady who was dressed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, might conceive an, off, uh, an offspring. And this is concealing the truths of the sacred secretion or Christ within. Again, it tells the correct astrological time for this by speaking of the sun and moon being in the same zodiac sign, okay? And furthermore, it says if a lady or a woman, and not a man, because this is concealing that this practice is all about raising the feminine energy we all possess, into equilibrium with the masculine. And the result is the birth of the Christ consciousness, okay? Because practices involved in this process are feminine in nature, like meditation, where stillness is required. And being alkaline is feminine, as alkaline is negative, opposed to acid, which is positive. Now, masculine is positive and feminine is negative. So we can see that this sacred secretion requires the raising of the feminine energy in order for success. Now I could go on about this subject all day, but I will leave it here. I think I've showed that the correct timing for this is when the sun and moon are both in your zodiac sign, around the, the time, two days off the new moon in your sign, okay? Now if anyone disagrees, or has any questions, please leave a comment. Also, please share this video, as most people think the correct timing is when the moon alone is in the zodiac sign, without any real explanation why this would be the correct time. Whereas I am showing you exactly why it is that the correct astrological timing is when the sun and moon are both in your sign. So it would be good for people to see an alternative to what's currently being taught. Okay then, that's all for this video, a huge thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already, the support is truly appreciated, and please don't forget to hit the bell at the right hand side of the subscribe button, thanks again.